The city is probably the oldest, most enduring invention of our civilization. The words are interchangeable. Civilization, civil, civic, city. Cities evolve over time. They respond to crises. And historically, they emerge from crises stronger than ever before. So what are the future trends for cities? And what are the lessons of history? Hello, I am Giuseppe Sala, I'm the mayor of Milan. Thank you for the opportunity to present my ideas about uh, the city of the future. I am a fan of uh, Lord Foster, like most of you, I'm sure. And I was lucky to participate with him at an event on cities hosted by the United Nations at Geneva not long ago. And I was touched by his invitation to gently rethink about the city of the future in these uh, troubled times, and also by his recognition of the role of the mayors. As uh, we live through a horrific pandemic, we all have the responsibility to think about the future in order to build back better our lives, our cities, our national and international system. This is why my first point is the need to come out from the COVID-19 experience with renewed effort for both a green and just recovery. The outbreak of COVID-19 has shown us how vital collaboration is to tackle emergencies in the short term and to plan more liberal green and welcoming cities in the long term. While we must continue to focus on preventing the further spreading of the virus and on responding to the immediate needs of our, our affected communities, we are also called to provide a long-term vision and to prepare for it as well as possible. Milan was hit hard by the pandemic early on. It is a particularly difficult experience in the 26 centuries of history of our city and one that affects the most vulnerable citizens the most. As mayor of Milan, I was clear that any recovery in my city must be rooted in the principles of equity and climate action. And I quickly found out that fellow mayors all over the world share the same vision. Very early in the pandemic, the C40 network that unites uh, the biggest and most innovative cities of the world under the leadership of the mayor of Los Angeles, Eric Cersetti, established a global mayoral recovery task force that uh, I had the honor to chair. We work together to prepare both a political statement and a very concrete set of policies and experiences to be put to the service of all level of government to achieve a sustainable and equitable recovery. We call it Green and Just Agenda. Mayors have joined forces because COVID-19 is causing immense suffering in their cities. And because uh, they know that while cities have been hit by the spread of the virus, it is precisely in cities that uh, lie the potential for innovation that is needed to ensure a recovery. We share the belief that the pandemic is connected to the climate emergency and comes on top of it, putting the future of our cities in danger. Mayor from all over the region of the world believe that the main areas to focus on are joint creation and support uh, to an inclusive economy, increasing resilience and equities, equity in our cities, and focuses, focusing on the health and well-being of people. As we know that cities cannot 
achieve a green and just recovery alone, we also put forward six key asks to national and regional governments and uh, to international institutions to support our effort. Those asks are, one, the only stimulus should be a green stimulus. Two, support needs to go directly to sustainable cities. Three, mass transit must be protected and championed. Four, clean energy must be prioritized and advanced. Five, we must commit to an equitable and inclusive recovery. And six, all public subsides to fossil fuels must end. We believe that city section will have a powerful domino effect in pursuing a green and just recovery throughout our continent. For cities, a recovery that is green and just is the only possible recovery and hold the benefits of sustainable and equitable investment for our citizens. We mayors feel that throughout uh, the crisis, cities from all over the world have showcased their resilient nature, responding quickly and being uh, the first to have a plan on now to recover. This is not only our best chance uh, to avert climate breakdown, but this is also the best thing for us, for our economies, and for the health of our people. Now, moving to, to Milan experience, in order to make all of this more concrete, I would like to refer now to our experience in Milan, which, uh, of course, in part reflects similar experiences from other cities in the world. For example, the 15-minute city Lord Foster referred to in his uh, keynote uh, address in Geneva is a very interesting concept that many cities are championing, and the credit goes uh, to Paris uh, and uh, Mayor Anita Gomes. It has to do with reclaiming public space and re revisiting our collective timetable to jointly create a more sustainable and healthier city life. In Milan, this concept resonates particularly because we have been focusing on the strengthening of the neighborhoods as the fundamental asset for the city to invest in, in order to improve the quality of life of citizens. The city intends to guarantee that essential services are within walking or cycling distance for all residents, offering an alternative to mobility by cars and preventing a surge in car travel and related emissions, with the aim of minimizing air pollution as much as possible. We are in conversation with businesses, the unions, and other actors to co-design mechanisms to encourage teleworking in ways that make it, make it collectively and individually efficient and useful so that people avoid filling up mass, the mass transportation system at the same time of the day. This is relevant in view of transforming the timetable of the city to make it more sustainable, equitable, and healthy. In terms of sustainable mobility and reclaiming of public space, Milan is also rapidly implementing the creation of up to 100 kilometers of new bike lanes. This was accelerated by the needs created by the pandemic. Physical distancing, safe mass transportation, but the quick turnaround of such initiative has been made possible by the long-standing work of the city on opening up public streets and square for citizens' carefree enjoyment. The open squares and open street initiative are building blocks of the city's strategy towards a less 
congested and less polluted city where public space is socially enjoyable by individuals or groups as the in the Italian piazza tradition we granted the public space free of charge to bars and restaurants to physically distance their tables and their parking. Now, after having issued over 2,500 permissions covering more than 60,000 square meters, we are studying how to make such measures permanent. Most of them convert parking space into social space. The city is also supporting neighborhoods, shops, and open markets to guarantee availability of fresh, good quality food in all parts of the cities, and is working on the improvement of the delivery logistics. I believe those measures are relevant for the immediate well-being of citizens, as well as for the long-term development of Mirai. As in many other cities of the world, lockdown measures led, uh, led Milanese people to experience a different cities. Less noisy, less congested, less polluted. I believe this is uh, a lot of scope now to make uh, a collective effort to maintain as much as possible those aspects as central in our building the Milan of the future. Let me tell you something about the public-private partnership. In order to mobilize, mobilize the great resources that exist in our cities and to optimize their actions for the collective good, something that is now as crucial as ever, given that the need to overcome a huge crisis, we must uh, look beyond the city government to the city governance that includes a wider set of actors and stakeholders from individual volunteers to citizens associations, businesses, universities, foundations, etc. In Milan, we have a long tradition of successful private-public partnerships, a way to rally around a common project that is collective and therefore long-term and multi-party. Such a wider alliance between city actors has been a tremendous asset in responding to the pandemic. The municipality of Milan coordinated the creation of the Milano Aiuta or Milano Health Network that centralized information on available services and mobilize volunteers, donations, and private sector support for vulnerable citizens and those temporarily in need. As a part of this effort, for example, Milan set up food distribution hubs across the city and created a food delivery system of hundreds of tons of food donated, reaching some 20,000 people per week with, with meals and providing other thousands with free food vouchers. Another example, adapting to the new reality of uh, online learning and access to services, the private-public alliance was pivotal in collecting donations of personal computers and tablets to support equal access to education from home. Also, one of the instruments we have launched is a digital portal aiming at the most equal possible distribution of social services across the city. We are working to create an advanced system of unified welfare, a welfare of all and for all that proposes at once all available services for individuals and groups free of charge and or pre-based. Ideally, any Milanese citizen will go onto the 
important to find a certified care given for the elderly or an expert child psychologist or any services that support reduced mobility, home assistance, etc. Other example of the virtual of the virtue of building alliance between uh, different uh, actors within a city have led uh, to innovation in sectors such as urban regeneration, social integration, and job creation. One of them is the Forestami Consortium, tasked with planting over 3 million trees in the metropolitan area of Milan by 2030. Another is Fabric, the first social innovation incubator of Milan, located in a peripheral suburb, but part of the beating heart of Milan's new economy. A last example is the innovative Reinventing Cities initiative, a call for proposal on the regeneration of underutilized urban sites that rewards projects born out of alliances between traditional real estate actors and civil society outlets. It looks at decarbonization and sustainable space as much as the needs and social resources resourcing existing at the local level. To conclude, if uh, I had to single out one lesson from the difficult experience of the last few months, it is that adapting our urban context to new conditions rapidly is possible. Now, it is the time to use the skills we have developed during the crisis to be visionary and lay the groundwork of sustainable and inclusive future for all. I believe that the mayor, mayor green and just agenda provides guidance and inspiration. Out of this global crisis, I am sure many ideas will find new legs to improve our urban environment and ultimately our lives. Thank you for your attention and happy planning of the city of the future. Thank you.